Miles Trouble News fans, one of my favorite hobbies is taking Islamophobia in the Toronto Sun and debunking it, proving what they say is not only just a blatant lie, but is also racist. Here's a good example. The May 8th issue has uh, an article entitled, Students Told Jews Are Like Nazis. Now what this is about is an incident that went down at the East End Madrasa, where somebody made a complaint of hate speech against, against Jews. Somebody claimed that the, the Islamic school there was teaching children that Jews are bad and saying things like they were conniving and, and all that kind of stuff. Now, uh, the Toronto police have said that they are actually investigating the claim. And they said they will get back to the public when they've completed their investigation. Now, all this stems from, a, from Lesson 8 in the kids' textbooks where it makes these claims against the Jews. Now, uh, the lesson has been removed from the website after the complaints, but I personally feel that there was no complaint actually to be made. Now, here's the thing. This is their proof of the so-called anti-Semitism that was in the book. Here's a quote that they take from the student's textbook. Ever since the Prophet's entry into Medina, the treacherous Jews had vehemently opposed him and his Islamic call. The crafty Jews entered into an alliance with the polytheist Karish in a bid to stamp out Islam. They conspired to kill the Prophet Muhammad. Now, in the Sun, they claimed it was on page 77, which is not true. It's actually on page 111 to 112. Now, you'll notice the editing job they did there, you know, with the dot, 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 meaning they left something out. Now, here's the entire part with nothing edited out. Ever since the Prophet's entry into Medina, the treacherous Jews had vehemently opposed him and his Islamic call, invoking memories of their hostility to the previous Prophet Jesus Christ half a millennium ago. The crafty Jews entered into an alliance with the polytheist Karish in a bid to stamp out Islam. They conspired to kill the Prophet Muhammad despite the fact he was lenient towards them and had treated them kindly, hoping to convince them of Islam's truth. But eventually, as Jewish plots and aggressions increased, he had no choice other than to take up arms against them in order to protect Islam and the Muslims. At the Battle of Khyber, which is most famous for Imam Ali's heroic exploits, the Prophet defeated them, ending Jewish intrigues and conspiracies in Arabia. Well, we have a little bit of a different context once we actually see the entire thing from the textbook. Now, it, here's the thing. I went ahead and found a link to that entire piece of the textbook that was on the National Post website, which is also a right-wing newspaper, but is screaming hell load more intelligent. So what in the description is a link to the actual textbook so you yourself can go and read it for yourself. And you can actually read the entire thing and decide what it means for yourself. Now, here's my problem with the way that they're trying to portray this. This is history. When they entered Medina, this is what happened. This is what Muslims were thinking at the time. This is what the Prophet Muhammad was thinking at the time and what they did. That's history. You can't alter history just because you don't like what it is. In fact, Christians uh, do it all the time. Now, th this is the story. If you don't like it, too bad. Now, I could do the same thing. I could take something from the Bible, which I do know because I went to a Catholic school, where it tells you how to sell your daughter into slavery. And this was a practice at the time, and the Bible does give directions on how to do it. Of course, they kind of skipped over that part when I went to Catholic school, but whatever. And I can use this as proof. See? The Catholic schools in Mississauga are teaching their students to sell their children into slavery. Of course, that would be an absolutely ridiculous claim to make, but I have just as much evidence. This is just, this is just insane. So, it, if they didn't teach that this is what the Prophet Muhammad was thinking, this is what Muslims were thinking at the time, this is what was going on, then the same people would be standing up screaming that they're trying to deny it ever happened. I mean, there was a battle here. This is what the Muslims did. This is why they did what they did. This is what they were thinking at the time. This is what the Prophet Muhammad wanted at the time. You can't just change history because you don't like it. I mean, we do do it. I mean, the histories of uh, residential schools in this country, the legacy of Native American genocide has been absolutely covered up. I've had arguments with people on Stickham saying that the genocide of Native Americans wasn't intentional, despite the fact that the U.S. military, the cavalry, had a deliberate policy of doing it. Sunday shoots were killings against Native Americans 
carried out after church. The famous saying, kill the buffalo, kill the Indian, deliberately exterminated the buffalo so that Native Americans wouldn't have any food. Now this is conveniently left out of our modern textbooks. So I mean, look, look, look in the mirror there. Also when I took history, they left out the whole part about Chinese slavery and building the railroad in Canada. They left that one out too. Now, just because you don't like what's in history, doesn't mean you get to have it edited out. This is history. This is what people were thinking at the time. This is their reasons for doing what they did. You don't like it? Too bad. When Woodrow Wilson ordered the uh, invasion of the Philippines, it was to Christianize and civilize them. That's his exact words. That's why he did it. We don't get to edit what he said just because we don't like it. That's what he was thinking, and that was his reasons for doing what he did. Now, this son dishonesty, tremendous. Now, as for the claim that they had actually compared the Jews to Nazis. Now you see, I have a friend in Toronto, part of the Islamic community, who does know these people and knows the lessons. Now while none of the papers actually give an example of actually what they said to compare Jews to Nazis, my friend who does know them told me what it was. They were comparing the Nazi regime and its killing of Jews to the Israeli apartheid regime in Israel and what it's doing to Palestinians. That's an absolutely fair comparison and one that's been made many times before. This is nothing new. And that's a fair comparison. The deliberate attempt to kill off the entire population of Palestine from denying uh, essential supplies, bombing hospitals, murdering children. It happens all the time, we know. That is a fair comparison. If you don't like that comparison, that's fine. But don't have a go and say that they were trying to compare the Jews to the Nazis. They were comparing Israel to the Nazis. That's actually what went down. And that is the truth.